Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today we're going to talk a little bit about something that has absolutely nothing to do with knives and we'll kind of give you a justification for why we're going to do it after we get done. So what we're going to make today is what's known as a, a mover. Now, um, I'm a competitive uh, pistol shooter in, in a discipline that would be called practical shooting, which is basically handgun shooting uh, against targets that are kind of humanoid shaped. You're shooting out of cars and uh, shooting on the move, shooting from cover, things like that. And uh, so, uh, you know, part of the cool stuff that you want to have is targets that move. Uh, I'm a match director of a match indoors. We've got very constrained space, and so in there we would like to have targets that move, but we can't have them too complicated or that move around too, too far. So what we're going to work on today is a little target stand that allows targets to move laterally um, so that you can shoot them during pistol shooting competition. The target carrier itself is pretty simple. It consists of several pieces of mild steel, an inch and a half square tube, some half inch angle iron, and some one inch angle iron, plus four skateboard wheels, four five sixteenths by sixteen bolts, two inches long, and twelve nuts, same thread size. So here's how it works. I drilled four holes for the bolts, which act as axles for the skateboard wheels, and four seven eighths inch holes uh, behind them to use as access holes for a nut driver or a socket wrench to install those axles. So two nuts are locked together to hold the wheel, then the third nut on each axle is tightened inside to retain the axle. A little Loctite won't hurt here. Then I cut the angle iron in half on a bias and welded this angle in to give clearance for the runner that it travels on. Then the one inch angle iron was welded onto those pieces directly beneath the center of gravity of the square tube. Then I spray painted it black. And that's it. So it runs along a piece of one inch ID electrical conduit. A hole drilled through the conduit on each end allows a trigger pin to be inserted on either end so that you can hang it whichever way you want and run it from left to right or right to left. You hang the conduit on a single piece of wire rope and you can adjust the down slope of the runner to achieve whatever speed you want. If you have more space, you can use longer sections of conduit, but we're on an indoor range so we're very constrained in how long the target runner can be. Here's how it works. All right, man, watch the is ready. Go, stand by. You simply suspend targets underneath the target carrier using welding clamps. Because there are no guides or shoes, you can hang targets however you please. One threat, two threats, two threats and a non-threat, a threat and a non-threat, however you want to do it. The little trigger pin is attached to a piece of string. You pull that trigger pin out and gravity does the rest. So how does it work? Well, we ran it through two courses of fire with about 30 shooters and the gizmo ran just flawlessly every time. If you want to make one yourself, you'll also need some form of bumper at the bottom to slow it down. Otherwise, it tends to kind of jump off the track when it hits the end. We made ours with bubble wrap and duct tape. So what's the takeaway here? One of the coolest benefits of knife making is that over time you grow skills in a lot of areas and you accumulate equipment that's useful on lots of projects. I would never have been able to do this project before I started making knives. I'm not a particularly proficient welder, but I can make two pieces of steel stick together with no problem. So a project like this becomes pretty easy. It's more about the design than about the execution. Knife makers also learn to solve lots of small mechanical problems. I was able to dream up and execute this project by harvesting ideas from completely unrelated fields and produce a pretty neat little gizmo without an excessive amount of work.
you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.